Hi, welcome to This Is My Architecture. My name is Andrea, and I'm here with Al from Cinefilm. Hi, Al. Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Andrea. It's great to be here. Um, so tell us about Cinefilm. What do you guys do? Uh, we make software that processes video for uh, retiming, deinterlacing, and uh, upscaling, and uh, noise removal, and, noise and re retexturing. Great. So today, we're going to talk about pixel strings. Mm -hmm. And that is a platform running on AWS. Mm -hmm. And I can see a bunch of different services here on the board. <laughs> um, let's walk through a use case. Okay. Right? What is the first thing that happens? OK. So Pixel Strings is a service that runs on AWS. And to access the service, uh, a user just has to use a regular web browser. We recommend Chrome. And they log in. They create an account uh, on the Pixel String server, which is running here on an EC2 instance. Mm -hmm. And so this is a regular internet connection. And um, they need to sort of bring their own video clips. OK. So. so I use the internet browser to access your web front end. Mm -hmm. um, do I then interact by adding content? Where is that uh, happening? Yes. Uh, the user um, uploads their input clips to an S3 bucket that they manage. Okay. Um, but in the web browser, they need to enter uh, their S3 keys so that our server, um, our job manager, actually uh, can talk to the S3 bucket. OK. And then I upload that data. Mm -hmm. How do you retrieve that information back to the user from the UI? OK. So uh, we use uh, media info running inside Lambda, uh, AWS Lambda function. And so the job manager uses Lambda to get metadata from the S3 bucket, from each clip inside there. Okay. And so uh, the user initially, if they have an S3 bucket already set up, and let's say it's got 100 clips in there, they'll see just only 100 clips with no metadata. but Every second or two, they'll see um, metadata filled in in the browser because these calls are going on in the background. I see. OK, so you're capturing the metadata and exposing it. Is that stored anywhere, or does that happen on the fly? Uh, that is stored, um, and it's cached inside a database. So the job manager, after it gets the metadata, um, it, it saves the metadata to the data database. The web server doesn't talk directly to the job manager. It actually talks to the database. And that's how they see oh, the I metadata. See. Yeah. I see. So now you know, I got my data loaded. Mm -hmm. I've got the metadata all exposed. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what kind of work would you be able to do as the content you know, uploader? What, what is the set of different things that you can do with the platform now going from here? OK. Um, you can do things like uh, retiming, and we call that. That's our wormhole product. OK. And then uh, deinterlacing is taken care of by what we call space time. And uh, uh, noise removal and retexturing, uh, mm -hmm. that's taken care of by dark energy. Yep. OK, so these services are exposed. Uh, they're all GPU accelerated. and. Um, the user in the web browser can decide one or more. They could have all of them um, active okay. in their job. So they define a workflow, including the, uh, the output codec used okay. for their output file. So. so let's walk through a situation here. right? So wormhole, we talked about, or you mentioned, the customer now want to edit mm -hmm. that clip. And what happens next? So they choose to do that. What is yes. the next set of steps that happens in this ecosystem? OK, so they can, they can select uh, one or more clips and one or more workflows per clip. Mm -hmm. They can be different workflows for different clips. Um, and then they say, go. And they submit. And we, um, we, we give them a cost, because we know how long each clip is from, from the metadata. And we give them an estimate. So we say, this is how much it'll cost you really want to. And they say, yes. They hit submit. And then the job gets submitted. And the job manager now, it, it can send one job uh, to each CPU. So that all these jobs can run in parallel, up to okay. 200 jobs at once per region. OK, so. gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you have parallel work happening here. Mm -hmm. I see G3. Mm -hmm. I suspect you were referring to GPU-enabled cl cluster here. Is yes. That, is that a fair assumption? Yes. OK. So the processing happens here. Mm -hmm. um, so how does that then go translate into something that a customer can now view or have to their disposal? OK. So the job manager, um, a after the GPUs are done processing, mm -hmm. uh, they write their output to local disk. Um, and then the output gets written back to the bucket. So there's a, an asset manager here. So 
Um, I should have mentioned the asset man the job manager tells the asset manager to copy the input clip to the local disk okay, of the G3. That makes sense. And yeah, and then it tells uh, when the job all the GPU processing is done uh, and encoding is done, I then see. job manager tells the asset manager copy the output clip back, back to the customer's bucket. Back there. Yes. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, in this platform I, or for this platform, I can assume many users mm -hmm. doing this simultaneously. Talk yes. us about scale. How many users can you accommodate at the same time, accessing and doing pr processing? Uh, the web server uh, can handle about 100 users. Uh, we actually haven't pushed it all the way to the limit, but it's, okay. you know, it's, it, it scales pretty well. Um, and then 200 jobs just because of the number of G3s that we've been allocated per region. I see. So if we are allocated more, we could scale to more jobs. Okay. And we could always uh, switch the web server to a different EC2 instance to handle more users. I see. So. And does this then also come with multiple instances, or is it single? Talk yeah, us it's, about right now. It's high just a single. It, yeah, right now this is just a single instance. The high availability uh, we focused on making the, the, the our software run on uh, a, a whole bunch of GPUs at the same time. Okay. Um, if a GPU fails. Um, it, it, it's, it's very rare because AWS is so reliable. But some, once in a while, there'll be some sort of startup glitch, and in that case, a timeout will occur. The job manager will, will realize that, and it'll shut down that GPU and start a new one, okay. and the job can continue. Okay, so you, on an ongoing basis, you have mm -hmm. feedback as to what's really happening yes. in the cluster, and you yes. make sure this is highly available. Mm -hmm. I do see IMF. What does it stand for and what does it do? Okay, it, IMF stands for Interoperable Master Format. Okay. It's like uh, the digital cinema package, but it's intended to be like the next step beyond it. Um, and then, and Netflix um, encourages their customers to submit clips in um, the IMF format. Okay. So if anyone wants to publish to Netflix, um, they need to use IMF. So how does it work now? The job execution is being processed by your G3s. Yes. Where does IMF come into play? Is that a next step, or does that does the web server communicate directly with the interoperable um, master framework? Um, yeah, that's selected uh, by the workflow. So back in the web browser, mm -hmm. if the user wants the output to be IMF uh, in IMF format. Then they there's a there's a uh, pull down. They can say, all right, do this, and they have to enter IMF okay. metadata. That gets sent. The job manager knows it's IMF. So when the GPU processing is done uh, and the encoding is done, the job manager says, oh, by the way, this is an IMF job. Don't it doesn't tell the asset manager to copy that output. Instead, it sends um, the data to IMF. Okay. IMF wrapping takes place, and then the asset manager copies oh, the results copies out. back to yes. the user. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. Let's talk about geographic reach. Okay. Right? Is this accessible for users across the world? What is the geographic reach here? Uh, we've got uh, GPU clusters in uh, US West, US East, and uh, Ireland. Okay. And so users with buckets in, in regions, uh, in those regions, uh, they don't have to pay huge egress costs. Okay. Because then, because our EC2 um, instances are close to their bucket. I see. So exciting opportunity here. Where do you see this go? What is your vision for the future? Uh, in the future, we, we're going to add uh, more codecs, um, uh, better retiming, uh, including better audio retiming, uh, more scalability. Uh, we, we do um, want to make the web server have like a, a real-time fallover mm -hmm. to another server. Um, yeah, that's great. <laughs> So thank you, Al, for walking us through this architecture. You talked about essentially a user interface for processing data on GPUs and then providing the output files back to the user on S3. Yes. Thank you very much for being <laughs> yeah. here. Thank you. And thank you very much for watching. This is my architecture.